So in this video, I want to talk about what is asynchronous JavaScript concretely. To help me with that, I've created some perfectly synchronous code. Later, I'm going to change one part of it to be asynchronous. But for now, let's focus on what's going on in this perfectly synchronous example. So it's pretty basic. Two is assigned to the variable num. Uh, then num squared is initialized and its value is set to the value of square it. Uh, with num passed in as an argument. Okay, and this function returns the result of num squared in this uh, instance. And then that's going to be saved as the result of num squared. And then we log num squared to the console. Now, the way that the JavaScript engine executes this code is to start at the top and complete each line before moving on to the next one, making the behavior of our script very predictable. So I can be confident when I pass in num as an argument that the value two has been assigned to num because this happened on line one. And so by line four, I know that exists, then the JavaScript engine is going to go inside this function and return the result. And then it's going to assign that result to num squared and continue on with the rest of the code. So with synchronous code, our life is made very easy, JavaScript just completes our code from top to bottom. So if I head over to the browser and look at the result, this should now be four. So you can see four is here and this welcome message in our code is printed to the DOM. But now let's introduce some asynchronous code with set timeout. So set timeout is asynchronous JavaScript. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this line here in set timeout. So set timeout accepts a function in the first position. And in the second position, we specify how long we want to delay the execution of the function by. So I'm gonna, going to uh, delay it by 100 milliseconds. Okay, now if I save that and it's formatted it automatically, I'm using the uh, Prettify plugin that formats my code on saving. Uh, now if I head over to the browser and I repeat my code, you'll see that we're getting an undefined value for the console log. Now the result is undefined because when JavaScript comes across some asynchronous code, like set timeout, it sets it to one side and then it completes the rest of the code and then it returns to complete whatever is inside uh, the asynchronous code. So in this case, inside set timeout. So when we talk about asynchronous JavaScript, we're talking about types of code that behave in this way. So we've already seen how this works with set timeout. Set interval works in a similar way. Very importantly on the front end, any type of HTTP request is asynchronous. It doesn't matter what method you're using, whether it's fetch or jQuery's Ajax or Axios, they are all asynchronous because it takes a while for the response to come back to us and JavaScript just carries on executing your code instead of waiting. And if you are working in Node.js on the back end, then any type of file system or database interaction is asynchronous. Now, it doesn't matter how long the asynchronous process takes, when JavaScript comes across some asynchronous code, like in the examples, it sets it to one side and completes it later. So if I was to change the delay on the execution of this set timeout function to zero, what do you think will happen? Well, what happens is it still comes back undefined because it's still being set to one side and completed after the rest of the script is executed. So our console log is going to be still undefined. Now, the nice thing about this is it's non-blocking. So the displaying of this welcome message is not delayed by, for example, a second we had before. Okay, this is displayed instantly. So this makes JavaScript very fast. It doesn't waste any time at all. But the challenge is if some code is dependent upon the outcome of an asynchronous process. 
So asynchronous JavaScript is actually a good thing. It makes our code execute as quickly as possible and very efficiently. But in order to handle the result of some asynchronous code, like we have in this set timeout here, we need asynchronous programming techniques, such as callbacks, promises, and async await syntax. And it's these asynchronous programming techniques that we are going to be covering in detail in the next videos in this series.